Hey everybody, Smart Silver Stacker here. Today is Thursday, September 1st, 2022, and it is a rough day in markets. All of the major stock indexes are in the red. We've got pretty much everything selling off today. Crude oil down, gold down, silver down. Bitcoin is back down under 20,000. And this is uh, a sell-off that has been persisting basically since last week when Jerome Powell had his Jackson Hole speech where he came across, uh, you know, very hawkish, said the Fed was going to raise rates to get inflation under control no matter what. And the markets did not like that. And then today we got this news. The uh, ISM manufacturing PMI came out at 52.8%. It's the same number that we had last month. And it was better than expected. They were expecting a 52% PMI. And basically this index, when it's above 50%, that indicates growth. When it's below 50%, that is... Uh, shrinking in the economy and in manufacturing and so you know this is perceived as good economic news and so it's another example of this bizarre situation we find ourselves in where good news is bad news for markets because you know people interpret this as meaning that the economy is remaining strong and the fed has the wiggle room it needs to continue hiking rates and being tighter with policy and this just shows us that the fed is really what is driving uh, market action at this point. It has really nothing to do with the underlying fundamentals. And to those of us looking at precious metals, you know, we're pretty familiar with that. It looks like uh, the markets as a whole are getting a taste of that. And speaking of the metals, it's been a pretty rough month. We've got the 30 day chart for both gold and silver pulled up here over at silverprice.org. And you can see uh, both metals have been on the decline. And so I want to talk about where the silver price is right now. And I want to go back and look at some historical data for you and get an idea of, you know, how low could silver go? How low has it been in the past? Because, you know, in the short term, I suppose there's no real hard and fast bottom. The price could plunge to any given price, especially when we're talking about the paper spot price and not necessarily the uh, price of an actual ounce of physical metal. But if we look at where the price has been in the past and how low silver has gone before, maybe we can get an idea of, you know, what kind of a price range we might be looking at here moving forward. And so to do that, we can take a look at this 30 year chart here on silverprice.org. And one of the things you'll notice is that, you know, the price back in the 90s remained very low, uh, under $10. And I think for most of that decade, the price of silver averaged around five bucks. And then if we go to the most recent year where it remained that low, it's around 2001. And if we want to get the price for that, we can actually just Google the price of silver in 2001. And we get a response here from silverinstitute.org that the price of silver averaged $4.37 in the year 2001. And then if we go over to an inflation calculator and we go ahead and plug in those numbers, uh, the year 2001 and then four dollars and 37 cents can adjust that for inflation so we get a price in today's dollars of about seven dollars and 31 cents and so that is basically the lowest that the silver price has ever been in terms of today's dollars in recent history seven dollars and 31 cents and so of course that's a lot lower than where we are at right now but you know considering everything that's going on in the economy, considering the bubble that we see in other assets like real estate and stocks and how the air really hasn't fully come out of those yet. If we do get some kind of a major stock market correction or a major pan sell off, you know, silver could absolutely fall this far, especially when we're talking about the paper price. Again, I don't think it's very likely that in my lifetime, I'll ever be able to buy an ounce of physical silver for $7 and 31 cents again. But I do think that we could see the paper price fall that far. Now, in the same vein, to kind of try to establish a range for where silver could go, we can use some numbers from recent history. Put in the year 2011 here into our inflation calculator that uses the CPI. And uh, silver hit a high of about 50 bucks in 2011. And if we adjust that for inflation, we get a price in today's dollars of about $65.86. And so, you know, that's probably the range for the price of silver that we can expect it to trade within, you know, using history as a guide. And so it gives us a low of about seven bucks, high of about $65. So we are certainly closer to the low end of that range. And, you know, you would expect to actually be kind of closer to the high end considering everything that's going on with inflation. 
but you've also got to factor into this rising US dollar index that we're seeing. Uh, right now, the dollar index is up again, up to about 109.63. And if you want to find a time in recent history that the dollar index has been this strong, you've got to go all the way back to 2002. And so, uh, you know, the dollar index is at its highest point in 20 years. And this has to do with the fact that you know, we've got raging inflation and an energy crisis in Europe, so the euro is looking less attractive as a currency. Uh, the other currencies are just basically uh, worse than the dollar. You know, the dollar is just the least sick currency at the moment. Even though we've got high inflation here, still, compared to the other currencies that uh, the U.S. dollar index compares the dollar to, the dollar is doing great. And so I think a lot of that is being reflected in the price of gold and silver at the moment, especially silver, but also, uh, you know, inflation expectations. Uh, people expect the Fed to be able to get inflation under control. That's part of why they're selling their metals. You know, they're afraid that there's a recession incoming and uh, they're concerned that there will be less industrial demand. And, you know, all of that is true. But the thing is, you know, I, I think the thing that markets and investors are getting wrong is how successful the Fed's going to be in its inflation fight, because you got to keep in mind, I mean, by historical standard, rates are still near record lows. Uh, you know, they've hardly done any quantitative tightening. So far, the Fed balance sheet is down about 1.2% from its highs in April. And already the economy, despite the higher ISM PMI number, you know, we are still seeing a weakening economy. We have a dysfunctional jobs market where we have this labor shortage, despite the fact that supposedly we have low unemployment. It's just a dysfunctional economy. It's one that is based entirely on debt. The Fed is going to eventually have to pivot. They're going to have to pivot sooner rather than later, or we're just going to see a complete catastrophe in debt markets and in interest rates. And I don't think that there's any way around that. You know, it's just a mathematical inevitability at this point. That's what happens when you have $30 trillion in debt and growing, and you've been you know, abusing the privilege of having the world's reserve currency for so long. So anyway, you know, I'm just uh, taking this opportunity to stack some more metal. And I do want to head back to the inflation calculator here real quick. And, you know, this is a number I've talked about in videos before. But in 1980, the price of silver did hit 50 bucks as well. And just using the CPI, if you adjust that, that gives you a high in recent history of $179.78 in today's dollars according to the CPI, which, you know, probably understates the inflation. And a lot of people, when I talk about this number, I get a lot of flack in the comments because, you know, people will say, well, that was the Hunt brothers, you know, they were trying to corner the silver market. And that is true. I mean, the Hunts were trying to corner the silver market, although, you know, gold also hit $850 in 1980. So it wasn't like it was exclusively the Hunt brothers driving the price action in silver. Other commodities also spiked. But, you know, I don't think that just because there were the Hunt brothers trying to squeeze the silver market that we shouldn't take that price into account because, uh, you know, this shows us that there can be a squeeze in the price of silver and the way that the price of silver can react violently under such circumstances. And what I think people don't realize is that, yeah, we had a silver squeeze in 1980, but that time around, you know, the government was able to control that with regulation. But the squeeze that we're going to see in silver and in physical assets when we ultimately get a dollar crisis, you know, it's going to make the Hunt brothers look like child play. And there's not going to be any regulations that can be passed to control the price of physical assets because there's just going to be a huge flood of liquidity and currency, all this currency that's been created seeking a safe haven. And there's not that much silver, folks, especially when you're talking about physical. So, uh, you know, we should take heed this inflation adjusted high for silver from 1980 because I think we could be ultimately heading there in the relatively short term. You know, I, I don't know how long the dollar has as the world reserve currency. It could be a black swan takes it out tomorrow or it could last another 20 years. But it seems to me at this point that it is inevitable that eventually the dollar loses its world reserve status just given, you know, the math of the situation and how much debt we have accrued and also, the fact that, you know, the trend of de-dollarization is gaining a lot of steam worldwide among a lot of nations that have a lot of resources and a lot of people 
Most of them talking about the BRICS nations, but um, you know that's all something we have to keep in mind when we see these pullbacks in the price of silver. And you know, markets can be irrational. Personally, I just uh, ordered another kilo of silver uh, from SD Bullion, and right now they've got a sale going on where you can get a one kilo silver bar, any quantity. You don't have to order a large quantity to get any kind of price break. Two forty nine over spot. So right now you can get a kilo of silver for six hundred and fifty seven dollars and two cents. Now I should have waited. I bought mine a couple days ago. I think I paid about six eighty for mine, but I'm okay with that. You know, I'm not too worried about the fiat dollar price of the silver. When I look at my stack today, it's the same number of ounces as it was yesterday and the day before that. And pretty soon it's going to have an extra. 32.15 troy ounces added to it and uh, i'm pretty happy about that so probably do an unboxing video for that in the next five to ten business days whenever that package arrives and if you're looking for a good deal on silver you know none of this is financial advice but sd bullion is a well-known respected dealer i've always had a good experience with them they've got a good price on kilos and i think kilo bars of silver right now are probably the type of silver you want to look at if you don't want to pay a tremendous premium you know i still like constitutional and all that stuff but 249 over spot is pretty great. And who doesn't like a good kilo silver bar? They're awesome, fun to stack up, really nice piece of treasure. And like I said, I'll do an unboxing when that uh, shows up in the mail. But let me know what you think in the comments down below. Where do you think the price of silver will go from here? You think it's gonna drop all the way down to its historical low of about seven bucks? Or do you think that uh, we're gonna be headed towards that number of 179, the inflation adjusted high? from 1980 and also you know i should just point out that the cpi grossly understates inflation so you know the real inflation adjusted high if you really want to talk about the 1980 high in today's dollars it's probably 300 dollars plus but that's a topic for another video this has gone on long enough this is just kind of a rambling one for me giving you a quick update and some of my thoughts on the recent price action in silver thank you all very much for watching i'll catch you next time smart silver stacker out